Hello, this is Haskell Hallmark with the Rio Rancho Church of Christ in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. And Pastor Mark Tross at Victory Church of God in Grants, New Mexico. And the program is Cross Culture New Mexico, where we talk about the cross of Christ in our modern culture. We're finishing up the book of Romans this morning. We're in Romans chapter 16, and we went through a whole list of names that he greeted at the end of it. There's one verse there at the end of that we probably need to go back and, and finish with, though. So let's go to verse 16, where he says, Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send greetings. We were talking about it in between uh, our discussions last time and this time, that the holy kiss, the emphasis on the holy, the purity of God, the purity of us, we're supposed to have a holy relationship. This is not a sexual thing. This is not a thing that's designed uh, where a, uh, a man and a woman express something to themselves, to each other, in a very special way. This is actually just a greeting. Mm -hmm. Now, it just happens in their greeting, they greeted each other with a kiss. Now, we're probably talking something more like what the European kisses are today, where they'll do the kiss on each side of the, the cheek. You mentioned the Italian family from mm -hmm. your wife. Uh, that's the a very French. common thing, the French. Yeah. Uh, we don't do that in our culture right now, but we still do the, the handshake, and of course it's supposed to be the, the, uh, the weapon hand that is used to shake, and that's a sign of, of uh, I'm not a threat to you. It's a sign of peace. It's a sign of peace. Yeah. yeah. And the holiness there is emphasis. Now, I'm a preacher in the churches of Christ, and he says here, all the churches of Christ send greetings. What's interesting about this phrase here, this is not a name. This is a description. Right. The word church here comes from the word ecclesia, which means the called out ones. You mentioned it last time. The called out ones. We're the called out ones of Christ. The ones who are in Christ then. In other words, the saints, the, uh, the uh, Christians, however you want to describe them. It's not a title. In fact, if you look in the scriptures for a title of the church, you will not find one. Mm -hmm. You find descriptions. Churches of God. That's the called out ones of right, God. Right, it's the, the same thing with God. me. That, that, that's mm -hmm. in scripture, mm -hmm. but it's not a particular title. It's not it the is title, the yeah. reality of mm -hmm. the church. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the church is called out. That, that, that word also means that the church is powerfully reaching out. And okay. that's something that you don't mm -hmm. see much of today. We can talk mm -hmm. about evangelism, we'll preach the gospel, mm -hmm. want people to receive Christ. But we are to be active in our communities. We are sure. to be recognized. And this is what got the church in trouble <laughs> at, mm -hmm. at the early times because they mm -hmm. were spreading all over the place. And, mm -hmm. and much of it was you know, brought on persecution. Mm -hmm. But we're still to be that today. We are the salt of light. We are the change yeah. agent. And, and we are called out of Christ, not to called out of the world or called out of uh, Satan or called out of some particular person. We are the ones who are called out of Christ. We are mm -hmm. the churches of Christ then. Uh, but it's a generic reference to all the churches there. Now, there weren't any denominations back then. Right. They already had some heresies beginning to crop up, and there probably were some groups that had split off already. But basically, he's talking about the churches of Christ. If we recognize then that the churches of Christ uh, are the churches in that area that are sending their greetings, all he's really saying is uh, the Christians here send their greetings. And it just happens to be the way he expresses it here, the description of the churches, meaning there are different groups, there are different individuals, uh, different scattered around, because he was in an area that would have had a number of different churches in a number of different towns. And he says then, greet one another with a holy kiss, and all of us send our greetings to you. Mm -hmm. All right? Would you like to read on then? You're reading King James. Why don't you start in verse 17? Now that we're past most of the, the hard names. The hard names. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I should have left that to you. <laughs> okay, verse 17. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. This is a key mm -hmm. scripture here because we're, we're basically taught, well, we're not to judge one another, <laughs> but it's critical it's a that we rightfully view, yeah. divide the word of truth yeah. as believers. Mm -hmm. And as you said about the Church of Christ, or mm -hmm. I could point out Church of God, it's not about we're going to take sides here because those mm -hmm. are the churches that we're attending. Mm -hmm. It's about preaching the truth of the gospel. And scripture predominates everything. Yes. It, it overrules everything. Yeah. Your opinion, my mm -hmm. opinion, anybody else's teaching or doctrine that mm -hmm. doesn't matter up with this book because this is the Word of God and we are all required to rightfully divide it but we do have the ability through the Holy Spirit to do that it's very clear and as you said no scripture stands alone mm -hmm. but so which is why we need to read all scripture mm -hmm. all scripture is God breathed but so it's very important that we when we see division when there's gossip when there's slander when there's negativity uh, towards any person in the body that is not 
biblically able to be brought forth by approaching that person mm -hmm. according to scripture or then two people and then bringing it before the leadership or the body. But it's important that we realize Paul was guarding and he was telling the people in Rome and us today that we need to guard the church. We are the gatekeepers. We need mm -hmm. to properly represent it and we need to hold one another accountable to God and each other. And that's a tough one, mm -hmm. but we have to man up to that. We have to we are to grow in the grace and knowledge of God, right. which is what kind of what we talked about last time with all these people in this chapter. But we are to be responsible and accountable before God and each other. And we are anybody who's contrary to the doctrines mm -hmm. of this book we need to point out, and unfortunately, there's too many of them today. Mm -hmm. uh, and there have been over the years, as you, yeah. when you taught about the spirit of Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to realize that, but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple or the innocent. And, and you know, Jesus is big. The, the whole of scripture, really, when we talk about religion is about widows and orphans. God does not want us to take advantage of anyone, especially those who are feeble and need us. We, we are, again, the gatekeepers. We are responsible before God to help the widows and orphans. And, th and this is some things that many churches get behind, and this is some things that many churches miss. And, and, and I, I've talked about it here on this program. I get very frustrated with people who say, well, I don't believe in religion. Because the Bible does teach about a real religion, mm -hmm. and that's why we cannot throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right, absolutely. Going back on that idea of the divisiveness and the obstacles, the, um, there are several layers of this that we can talk about. We can talk about the relationship errors that we have as people where I don't like the way you said something, so we discuss it and then get into an argument over it and maybe even fall out over it. He talks about that elsewhere, but that's not what he's really referring to here. He's referring to someone who has specifically left Christ. Mm -hmm. He says they say they're with Christ, but they're not. They're not serving Christ. Uh, we go to the uh, Antichrist thing that's brought up just a moment ago. And John talks about those who used to be part of us but left us mm -hmm. and are now preaching a gospel that is not a gospel, that are now preaching a Christ who is not the Christ and actually are, are uh, opposing Christ because of what they're doing. Uh, he's talking about individuals that are what, what come to be called in, in future times as heretics. Mm -hmm. Individuals who have changed the message to what they want instead, and they get in subtly sometimes. Uh, the New International says, by smooth talk and flattery. Uh, of your King James, the older translation said it a little bit differently, but the idea is they can sound good, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they are. Right. They can use the right words. They can make them seem the same. In fact, one of the things that has been an identifying mark, uh, Martin talked about it in Kingdom of the Cults years ago, is that they'll use the same word we use, but they mean something totally different sometimes. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, an innocent person or a naive person or a person who's simple, a person who is not sophisticated in the arguments that are being brought forth, maybe not knowing the history of where this argument came from. The Gnostics, for example, could say, yeah, we're Christian. They weren't Christian right. at all. They, right. they were completely different. And so for the arguments today of the modern times saying, you know, these are lost gospels. No, they're not. They're not lost gospels. They're lost heretical documents, you know. Mm -hmm. Not the same thing at all. They say they're from Christ, but they're not. Well, so we have that overview of that, that huge heretical issue that comes up periodically. Well, and th this is the issue that we deal with today with the cults. And, and we can say, well, they're not really a cult. They believe in Jesus. Well, they don't believe in the Jesus of the Bible, and Paul warns mm -hmm. about another Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, we must be very clear. You must be in the Word. You must mm -hmm. be in the Word, or you're not going to see these things. You're not going to know. But, you know, it's, it's like the Treasury agent that was asked, uh, you must have uh, studied a lot of uh, fake bills to, to understand. He says, no, no, no. We don't study the fake ones. We study the, the right one. Mm -hmm. We study the authentic one. Because all we have to do is recognize this is what's authentic, and if this is not the same as that, then guess what? This one's not authentic. So all we need to do is study the authentic and we'll be able to recognize what the unauthentic is. Yeah, and, and today the big the big deal I think of the day is the prosperity preaching. Oh my god. Or or the <laughs> idea of success mm -hmm. and everybody's God smiling intended for us all to be all rich here Mercedes. on Earth. Mm -hmm. We all live in a million dollar home. Mm -hmm. That that is not the prosperity. Now the word prosperity is throughout scripture. But it, it, you don't see any of that in people taking advantage of one another. Or you're going to give a million dollars and therefore 
you know, you're going to get a mm. million dollar return. That is not at all what scripture teaches. Really, and no. unless you're in this, you're going to accept that. You know, Paul talks, I didn't come to you with basically fancy, smooth mm -hmm. talking. I came to you with the spirit and power of God. Mm -hmm. And of course, he came with the word of God. He came with the presence of the name of Jesus Christ. And it was so that their faith would not stand on the wisdom of men, right. but rather on the power of God. Yeah. And we need to constantly go back to the scripture, the power that he has given us there. All right, go ahead. Contrary to what you have learned. That's an interesting way of expressing that as well. We see that in Galatians when he talks about the gospel that they had changed, that they were receiving mm -hmm. a different gospel. And if anybody brings anything to you other than what we preach to you, let him be accursed. Uh, these are, this is a strong issue. So it don't, sure is. Don't just or where it, Paul yeah. talks about uh, um, circumcision and he says, well, I wish they would go as, as far <laughs> go as so to far. <laughs> cut themselves mm -hmm. off entirely. Mm -hmm. This is extreme Christianity, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's so true. And if mm -hmm. we begin to intermingle with some of the garbage that's out there, it will affect us terribly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And so verse 19 says, For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. Again, what a nice compliment. Mm -hmm. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple or harmless concerning evil. And that we need to, be, we mm -hmm. need to see the contrast between death mm -hmm. and life, between darkness and light, between evil and holiness. Mm -hmm. they're, they're two extremes. They do not meet together. They do not intermingle at all. And again, we can say, well, this person's my friend, or mm -hmm. they, I like them, or they seem real nice. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that it's good and godly. Mm -hmm. Notice there that, that verse uh, that you just mentioned, good and the uh, evil. Uh, this one says, wise about the good, innocent about what is evil. Uh, I've known Christians and preachers, and I've even been tempted in the past to kind of think this way. And I made the mistake of actually talking to a preacher once who uh, had had a bad life before he became a Christian. And I mean a really sinful life before he became a Christian. And I said, well, you understand things better than I do. And he said, no, 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 that's not it at all. And he says, yes, I had something to be forgiven of, but you did too. Mm -hmm. You may not have recognized the way you should, and of course that's one of the things I had to go back to. And recognize, yeah, I was an enemy of God before I became a Christian too. But the fact is, he wants us to be pure. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be simple. He wants us to be innocent, naive even. You don't need to know the evil that's out there in order to be able to preach the good. And Jesus did not need to participate in sin mm -hmm. to know and understand what the judgment would mm -hmm. be upon us if he mm -hmm. did not intervene on our behalf. Absolutely, absolutely. But go ahead. Verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. In just looking over this for this program, I thought, wow, that, that's kind of interesting because we always mm -hmm. just say, well, Satan was defeated on the cross. Obviously he was. Jesus said it is finished. Of course, mm -hmm. his mission was because he hasn't come back yet, mm -hmm. so it's not all finished. But when you look at that, it's like, wow, you know, and, and there was persecution in the church at this time. Mm -hmm. There is persecution going on today in the church as well. Not not so much here, although it's here as, as it is in other countries. But Satan is defeated. It's that we have to deal with the process until Jesus comes back. The culmination of it hasn't been uh, fulfilled right. yet, but the actual uh, accomplishment of it is already there. Uh, and what's interesting about this too, he said, uses the word soon. Uh, that seems to be the same reference that is used in, in Revelation mm -hmm. when the Apostle John has the revelation from God in which he says these things must soon come to pass as well. Uh, but the under his feet, it's interesting also too that in Rome in particular, there was going to be a persecution in Rome of Christians in just a matter of a few years from this particular point in time in which Nero was going to blame them for the burning of Rome. Mm -hmm. And it got worse a few years later. And uh, then it seemed to get worse as time went on throughout the rest of the first century. Uh, but eventually that changed. you know, And so we have... Uh, the church being given a different view of life from here saying, hey, you know, he's going to crush him into your feet soon. And, you know, this mm -hmm. goes way back to the fall. I mean, mm -hmm. the promise was that his heel would be bruised, but, he, but he's going to crush Satan's mm -hmm. head. And so we as the body of Christ, really, that's the, the, where we stand. Mm -hmm. We are above it all. Uh, we're not in it and of it all, but we do have to deal with it. And that, that's the reality of it. Okay. So, uh, Timotheus my work fellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sisipater, my kinsmen, again, salute mm -hmm. you or greet you. 
And I, Tertius, this is another uh, interesting sentence here because we're mm -hmm. talking about Paul writing Rome, mm -hmm. Romans. Mm -hmm. Verse 22 says, I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Now, is that a contradiction in scripture or, or biblical teaching? Mm -hmm. Not at all because he was the scribe. Paul was writing it out and, or interpreting it and he would write it down on the scroll. Mm -hmm. And so that's that, you know, and people will argue over that today, but it says, and that comes down to the letter of the law versus the spirit of the well, law. Well, understanding too what the cultural time period was. They didn't have paper. They went down to Walmart and bought right. for two, $2 for a <laughs> ran 500 Ran it off on piece, the printer. Ran it off on the printer or whatever. Uh, they didn't have ballpoint pens. They had quills. They didn't even use sticks. They used quills and they would dip them in an inkwell and they had some process that they used to make paper but it was called, it was actually papyrus, from which we get the word paper actually. Mm -hmm. But papyrus was actually a reed that grew on the, uh, in the waterways. And it started in Egypt where they would take these stalks and uh, flatten them out, literally crush them or, or, uh, or, or, or hammer them until they got crushed out. And they would lay them down in sheets and then they would cross them and lay them down in other sheets and then they would make a scroll out of it. This is not something that is cheap. There's a lot of labor involved. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of expense involved. And when you used it, you used it carefully. And in fact, we find documents, uh, ancient documents, in which some of those documents were cleared of the previous writings in order to be able to put something else down because it was too expensive to go get something else mm -hmm. or it wasn't available in some cases. So what we have is we have a professional uh, scribe, I guess would be the right. best way to put it. A professional who would do it. it, it correlation to that in business world, That'd be like the uh, executive secretary right. or the one who takes the, the notes, you know, write this letter for me. And she takes the notes and then goes out and types it for him. It'd be the same type of thing. Tertius or Tertius in this case is the amanuensis. That's the actual word they used in reference to an individual who did that. Uh, that just means he's the secretary or he's the scribe or he's the one who wrote it down. So the process would have started with God through Christ to the Holy Spirit to the inspired individual, in this case the Apostle Paul, to then whomever else it went to. So it went to the uh, scribe to be put on paper. Uh, do you think he wrote down something different than what Paul told him to write down? <laughs> he wouldn't dare. Wouldn't dare. <laughs> but at the same time he felt free enough to be able to put a personal note in. I, who wrote this down, uh, the New International actually says who wrote down this letter, uh, which gets across what it actually says in the Greek a little bit better I think, and that's what we're explaining. It, I wrote this, greet you in the Lord. I'm sending my personal greeting here as well. And then he goes on uh, finishing up what Paul puts in there as well. So Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church saluteth you. Erastus and the chamberlain of the city saluteth you. And Quartus, a brother, and, and the, the whole chamberlain is the treasurer. Okay. Uh, they actually call it a city director in the New International Translation. What's interesting, though, this is a public official. Mm -hmm. This is an individual who uh, has been influenced for Christ and has become a Christian. And, um, uh, you know, we think, well, this is just a little minor movement underneath. Nobody of importance was actually reached with it. No, people were being influenced through all stratums of the society at that point in time. Yeah, and Paul emphasizes mm -hmm. that in other portions of Scripture mm -hmm. as well. Okay. So, um, Verse 24, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And you know, it's interesting because we see this, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Paul opens up with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Mm -hmm. um, so be it is what amen means. And But again, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of grace. This, this word mm -hmm. is a word of grace because it's a word that's given by the Spirit. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. What an what a intimate way of presenting this. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ that was mm -hmm. given to Paul, that he's given. And mm -hmm. again, here's this guy writing it down, and now we're communicating it to people around the world. It's, it's really interesting. But God gives it to us now, Paul's uh, gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation, and you mentioned the mystery mm -hmm. earlier, the, the revelation of the mystery. And the mystery here is not Sherlock Holmes trying to dig it out. It's mm -hmm. something that has been revealed. It might have been hidden in the past, but now in Christ, it's a revelation. Or it might have just been misunderstood in the past. Right. 
right interpreted the wrong way and and, and and so absolutely which was kept secret since the world began mm. that's how long and mm. then when paul gets his revelation to present it to the, here the gentile church and of mm. course there were many jews at the time who had come in because it started at the temple mm. but we we see that this is an intent of god from the very beginning the church is there and we see paul explaining that and mm. In the book of Ephesians, where the husband and wife in the household is representative of the church mm -hmm. or the ecclesia or ecclesia. Mm -hmm. And so, but now is made manifest. And, and, and I love now. When the word now is in the Bible, mm -hmm. that means now. It meant it was manifest then. Mm -hmm. It's manifest for us now. You may be hearing this for the first time ever. And, and now it's your responsibility and it's yours to respond to and even get involved with. The word manifest is an old word. We use it today, but we use it in different ways. Uh, but this is a, a revealing. This is a, an uncovering. Mm -hmm. It's now uncovered. It's now revealed. It's now put in the light. It's put clear enough that you can understand it. So, but now revealed or now made manifest. Yeah, right? and even as Jesus said, so that the little children can get it. Mm -hmm. This is not that complicated mm -hmm. of a message mm -hmm. from Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. And there's part, portions of this mm -hmm. book that I have a hard time getting through, whether mm -hmm. it's like we talked about in the last program, some yeah. of those names or mm -hmm. some of the genealogies. Mm -hmm. But it's really not that hard for the mm -hmm. average person to grab a hold of. And that kind of brings us to the point that Romans has been considered a hard book to uh, understand. You don't study Romans until you're... Uh, mature Christian. That's not true. No. This book is easy to understand. You just have to put it together, simply work it through, trust God as you're going through it, and you'll begin to see, yeah, this is great. It's revealed this message, this mystery now. But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, and that's all of them, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known, listen, I love this, made known to all nations, for the obedience of mm. faith. And we've talked mm -hmm. a lot about faith during this book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And without faith, you cannot please God. That's both Old mm -hmm. and New Testament. So from the beginning of the world up to today until Jesus comes back and into eternity, mm -hmm. it's the reality of faith. It's the reality of all of Scripture being mm -hmm. fulfilled in Christ. And so... The commandment of everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. That, what, what a exaltation mm -hmm. that everything we read from Romans 1 to Romans 16 was all about God. And we talked about a lot of different people, a lot of Jew and Gentile, a lot of different topics. The Roman road aspect, mm -hmm. which is very easily explained in a lot of tracks today. And uh, I, do, I want to encourage our, our viewers that they can go to Haskell Hallmark or Mark Tross or Cross Culture New Mexico online mm -hmm. and see these programs from start to finish. Maybe you missed one, maybe you missed them all. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just something that with this type of book, and I loved going through this with you, I think we covered a lot of ground. We could probably in a few years re redo this book and mm -hmm. get a whole uh, other segment out mm -hmm. of this. But what do you think? Wow, I think it's impressive. I want to go back to this uh, verse uh, just before we get to the end there. The doxology that he finishes with, it's common for him to break out in praise to God and praise mm -hmm. to Christ. But he says, so that all nations might believe and obey him. Mm -hmm. The idea of all nations, he expressed that in the prophecies. As you said, it was from the beginning that he was talking about this. Uh, they misunderstood it, mm -hmm. clear, or, or they refused to believe it, depending on how you want to express it. But when Christ came, uh, they didn't uh, want to accept him either. They, they, they had this vision of what he was supposed to be, and he didn't fit their idea of what he was supposed to be. And so as the early church developed, and the early church was nothing but Jewish Christians, the idea that Gentiles could also be brought in was a foreign concept culturally, and religiously, because the religious leaders had basically taught them that nobody else can be saved, just us. And so they had to be taught that, even to the point, as we mentioned once before, that Peter had to be shown a vision. Mm -hmm. So he would be willing then to go to a Gentile and preach the gospel to him. And then that uh, expression there, you mentioned faith and the obedience. Uh, we sometimes get to think in its faith only. You know, there's only one place in the scriptures where faith only is actually spoken. And it's in James where he says, you see, it is not by faith only, but rather we have works involved as well. Now, the works don't save us before we come to Christ, 
but they become a part of our expression of our faith in Christ Jesus. And the obedience, nevertheless, still is, is a process. And you've talked about obedience off and on throughout the Scripture here. Uh, Romans is not that hard to understand. But you have to be willing to kind of get an overview of it as well as put it in context with some of the other things. And then as you work your way through it, you get this beautiful picture of the unfolding uh, plan of God and the gospel that he's presented to us. And, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention too, power. You mentioned power just a minute ago. Isn't it nice? Romans 1, 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel for mm -hmm. it is the power of God unto salvation. And now he comes back to it with power at the end. Excuse me. Uh, I'm not bored. I'm, I'm, not I'm having trouble. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble with allergies today. Uh, but the uh, the power is a connection all the way through here as well. Mm -hmm. And and it is because we talked about this several times through this book. Mm -hmm. Paul writes that Jesus is, and this is out of Corinthians. Jesus is the wisdom and power of mm -hmm. God. So all wisdom, all glory, all honor, all power mm -hmm. is found in Christ, who is in the Father by the Spirit, mm -hmm. and we see this unity throughout. So all of the power that Paul talks about, and, and what's interesting, even looking at where we're going, you know, the next next week mm -hmm. we're going to cover going, going back into the Gospels. Mm -hmm. And so we should not be ashamed of mm -hmm. the Gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And we still grow in the grace and knowledge mm -hmm. of that. And no Absolutely. matter how many times Absolutely. you read through it, you're never going to get bored with it. And that's why I think eternity mm -hmm. is going to be wonderful. It's not mm -hmm. just going to be hanging on the clouds playing mm -hmm. the harp. It's going to be something where we will experience and know mm -hmm. and understand everything. And, and it, it'll never get boring. Mm -hmm. Which is amazing because we always get bored no matter what it is we're working <laughs> with. But that's the human problem we have. Right. All right, but now what we have here, the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ, amen. Um, be glory, the glorification of God. What is our purpose while we're here? And one of the things that I've learned as I go through this is that we can pick out things that we're supposed to be doing. We can pick, uh, pick out things that we're supposed to accomplish. But inevitably, there's this overview, there's this issue of glorification of God, praising God, uh, honoring God. And we pray that in everything we have done today and we've been doing throughout this series that we have done so and that we glorify God in everything we do. And I pray that you will also be uh, uplifted and edified as a result of it. My name is Haskell Hallmark. I'm with the Rio Rancho Church of Christ in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. And Pastor Mark Tross with Victory Church of God in Grants, New Mexico. And the program is Cross Culture New Mexico where we talk about the cross of Christ in the modern world. May God bless you in your life this week. Mm -hmm.